Hey everyone, David from Sunday Sounds here, and today I'm going to be designing the free patch of the week in the screen share, and you're going to get a behind the scenes look at my process, and I'll walk you through the steps that I take to design this patch. The reason I wanted to do a screen share for today's free patch of the week is uh, this is going to be kind of a fun one. We're going to do a really simple MIDI sequence in main stage. Now, if you're not familiar with the, what a sequence is, it's just a series of notes. So a melody, a lead line, whatever you want it to be, and you're just able to have it happen sort of automatically when you trigger it. Now in recording software like Logic or Pro Tools or Ableton, this is easy to do. You can draw the notes in, you can record them and then play them back, however you want to work on that. It's easy to set that up. But Mainstage doesn't have a way to pre-program notes that will play back in a specific sequence. There's no MIDI sequencer plugin or MIDI effect or anything like that. A little workaround that you can do in Mainstage that will make this pretty easy to achieve. It's a little uh, convoluted to set up the first time, but once you understand the steps that you need to take, it's not actually that bad to replicate and use again in the future. So I use this all the time when I'm programming song patches for sundaysounds.com to play a single trigger note, or usually a bass note in the left hand, and then get back an entire sequence of notes that are at the tempo and the subdivision and obviously the intervals that I want them to be. So this is really fun and useful. I thought this would make a great screen share. So let's design the free patch of the week right now. First, I'm gonna add a patch and an instrument channel strip, and I'm gonna load the Retro Synth plugin. It sounds like this in my default preset. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a four bar sequence, um, and how I want this to work in uh, for performance is when I play a bass note, uh, I wanna hear four notes back. So when I play C2, I want it to play this sequence, right? And then when I play G down here, we'll have it do that. And then I play A, and we'll have it play. And then F, uh, we'll do like that, something like that. But the idea is that this is sort of an arpeggiated pattern. And as long as I hold a single bass note, it'll play back those four notes over and over, uh, but this isn't as simple as just um, setting up a chord trigger and then turning on an arpeggiator because you've got variance in the notes, right? So, so right there. They're not all the same pattern, so you couldn't just set up an ascending or a descending arp and get this effect. So I've got the link checked here in purple so that when I open a new plugin, the old one will close. Uh, I recommend you do that when you're going through this process because there are a couple duplicate plugins that you're going to need to add. So the basic building blocks of this sequence uh, are going to be here in the MIDI effects area. So if you don't see MIDI effects in your channel strip, right click on the top or the bottom of your channel strip and make sure the checkbox next to MIDI effects is on. So first we're going to add an instance of chord trigger, and then we're going to add an instance of the arpeggiator, and then another instance of chord trigger. And for now, we're gonna bypass these second two MIDI effects, and you'll see why in a minute. So remember I said we have uh, four bars with four notes each, so four beats, so um, we bypass this. Uh, right there. So each bass note needs to kick out four notes afterwards. So what this first chord trigger does is it just determines what your trigger notes are, that's gonna be here in the input section, and then what, uh, how many steps are gonna be in each, uh, associated with each trigger note, each bass note or trigger note. So since we want the note to trigger output four notes, <clears throat> then we need four notes down here to correspond with the one input note. So you need to be in multi-mode and chord trigger, if you're not familiar with how chord trigger works, we have a tutorial on our blog at sundaysounds.com. So you can search for the word, uh, the words chord trigger, and you'll find that tutorial. You need to be in multi-mode here, and we're going to click the learn button. And then I'm going to play that tr uh, trigger note, which is C2. Now, the output notes don't matter. What no it doesn't matter what notes they are. It just matters how many of them there are. And so when you're working with simple patterns, I like to stick with the white keys because it keeps things nice and simple. 
So I like to avoid using the black keys just because then it's all in a, in a horizontal line and it's nice and easy to keep track of. So we just need four notes to be the outputs for here. So I usually start with one, two, three, four. And it sounds pretty gnarly at, at first, but all we're doing is making that first trigger note output these four notes. Now these notes don't matter, they're just beats in the sequence. So later in the second chord trigger, we'll tell those notes um, which output notes to trigger. Uh, but for now, it's gonna sound a little wonky and that's fine. All right, now we're gonna go to our second trigger note, which is G. And now we need to choose four trigger notes that are, are different than the other trigger notes. So we went from C2, D, E, F. So for G, we're gonna start with G. And it does not matter what these notes are. They could be anywhere on the keyboard. They just can't be the same notes as the, uh, the C is triggering. Then we're gonna go to A. So we went up to C, so now we're gonna start here with D. And then to F. So now we play C, G, oops, C, G, A, F. So that sounds awful, um, but, but that's, that's okay. We're gonna give it some meaning in a second. <clears throat> All right, so now what I wanna do is open the second instance of chord trigger. And here we see, when I play now, I've got these four notes being triggered. So this is where we're gonna actually create our sequence. So we're gonna hit learn, and the first step in our sequence is the C2. And you may remember we actually want that to trigger C2. You choose the second note in your sequence, and you tell, th and this is where you determine what the output note's gonna be. So I want this to be G2. The third note, I wanna be D3. And the fourth note, C3. So right now, I can tell we're in business because when I play this single bass note down here, you can see, I'm getting this chord out. So if I go here and open up the arpeggiator and turn it on, look at that. So I'll, uh, I'm gonna turn the link off here. I'll open them all up so you can see what's happening. So up here is uh, the first chord trigger, so this top one. And then we've got the arp playing eighth notes, and then the output chord trigger is playing our actual sequence notes. So you can see here, I'm playing C and it's outputting these four notes. The arp is receiving those four notes and just playing them over and over. And then the output chord trigger is playing those four notes as the input and then giving me my actual notes as an output. So that's, that's how it works. This is, this is the simple-ish process to actually get a MIDI sequence to happen in main stage. So I turn the ARP back off um, so that we can work here without the ARP droning on. So let's program the rest of the sequence now. We're gonna go up to our fifth step. So this is when we play G um, right there. And then, uh, if you're unsure, it can be helpful to just turn, turn the ARP on in between each and make sure that you haven't gotten your steps mixed up. And again, this is why I like sticking to the white keys because it's easier to just count straight across than to go up and down. All right, now we're up to A. Let's hear that. Sounding good. And then our last little bit is here on the F. There we go. So 
So obviously now you could sculpt your sound however you wanted. You could add audio effects to make it more interesting. There's one real key setting here in the arpeggiator that I have saved as my default, but it's not the default in main stage. There's a couple settings in here that make this a lot more playable in live performance. And first off, you can adjust your rate here. So if I wanted it to be faster, but still sync to the same BPM, you could just adjust the subdivision there. You're always gonna want this upward, so ascending note order, which is the default. Uh, you wanna make sure your latch mode is set to add, or if you notice uh, notes uh, tracking over between changes and bass notes, then you can try reset mode. By default, it's set to transpose here, which causes a lot of issues in main stage, so I recommend add or reset. And then the other thing, uh, the setting that makes this really a lot easier to play live is over here in keyboard settings. You want to make sure that input snap is set to none. By default, it'll probably say link to rate. This makes it challenging if you're trying to sync to an external click. With input snap set to none, the sequence starts at the exact second that you hit that first note. Instead of waiting for a downbeat or anything like that, it just starts right away. So even if you're a little bit off in your changes, as long as there's a clean break between each note, then it will just start the clock over. It makes it a lot easier to execute live. So really quickly, let's go here. We'll soup this patch up a little bit. Got brightness on the mod wheel by default. That works for me. And then let's add some compression. And let's uh, compress it pretty aggressively here. Bring this output gain down because I know I'm about to make it louder. without and with and this is a little louder so that kind of makes you think it's better no matter what so I try to balance it out here there we go cool all right and let's add some delay the sequences like this that can this can really easily make things sound expensive Take out the lows, don't really need those. Okay, so right now, um, the velocity in RetroSynth is affecting uh, the filter cutoff, which is nice. So when you play more quietly, Um, then you're going to get less of that filter, which is great. You could do this in the ARP as well. If you went to grid mode, and then you just made the grid, let's say, four beats long. So we're basically doing the exact same thing as live mode right now, but now we have the ability to control the, ability to control the velocity. So that's pretty cool. And then we could tweak this as much as we wanted. We could add some glide. So smidge. And then if we wanted to, we could add some chorus modulation, give it sort of a poly, poly synth vibe. find that uh, adding chorus here makes it a little bit quieter, so we might turn that, that volume back up a bit. So that glide, I'm not sure I love it. You could, you could do this to taste, it's up to you. There we go, just a little bit. Um, lastly, we'll add just a smidge of reverb.
All right, cool. Now, uh, obviously this is gonna work for this specific song, for this context, whatever this song is, and it's gotta be in the key of C. Uh, but these principles will work no matter what key you're in. You'll just have to program uh, for whatever you wanna play in. But I'll show you really quickly. If you wanted to be able to use this exact sequence, but let's say that you wanted to play in the key of E instead of C, just open up both instances of chord trigger and then um, drag, that, drag it up or down the appropriate number of steps. So from C here to E is one, two, three, four steps. So we're gonna click here in the middle of the blue area, drag it up, three, four. So now, this is gonna trigger the same notes, but shift it up. We have to do the same thing over here, otherwise we're not gonna get the correct output notes. So one, two, three, four, I just pick a side. I, I like to move over to the right if I'm going up, down to the left, count down to the left if I'm going down. One, two, three, four, we're gonna end up on that F sharp. And this just lets us know. Um, and it, it's pretty easy to tell if you've done it right or not because these notes are obviously in the scale of the, of the key of E, right? They're in the key of E. Um, so if, if it looked like that, you would maybe kind of know, like those notes aren't in the key of E. And, I'll, and then you can always trust your ear to see if you've made a mistake as well. Um, but, but yeah, that's all that it would take to transpose the sequence um, uh, up or down the key range. But then again, if, unless you're using this exact sequence, you're probably gonna be programming this from scratch. So that's it. We're going to send out this patch to all of our newsletter subscribers in the free patch of the week in our Insiders Update email. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook and you would like to download this patch, head over to sundaysounds.com forward slash sequence and you'll be able to download this patch. And if you want to get a free main stage patch in your inbox every Wednesday, as well as more tutorials and main stage tips like this one, then on that page, sundaysounds.com forward slash sequence, you can sign up for our newsletter. It's free to sign up. Uh, we don't spam you with a bunch of junk. We actually send you useful tutorials and content once a week, as well as a free main stage patch every Wednesday. So um, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or somewhere else, head over to our website, download this patch for free, and then sign up so that you can get on that uh, free patch of the week list. Um, otherwise, thanks for checking out this video. I hope that it was helpful to you. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. If you did find it helpful, share it with a friend who you think might enjoy it as well. Leave a like, a comment, or share this video on your social media or email it to somebody. That really helps us be able to continue doing what we are doing. So I can't thank you enough when you spread the word about Sunday Sounds, when you share our tutorials with your friends. And again, if you want to download this patch, just head over to our website, website sundaysounds.com forward slash sequence. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.